And Senator Ali Arouzi, our bureau chief in Tehran, said that really what this deal does is it keeps the Iranian nuclear program virtually intact. But add to that, that as far as we're seeing this morning, and again, you and I are on the same page. We have to look through all the details of this 100-plus page agreement. But we're talking about the U.N. maybe lifting its ban on conventional weapons in the next five years. Ballistic missiles will end as far as the uh, sanctions uh, eight years or sooner, and then possibly billions of dollars going to the Iranian regime as a consequence of this. Isn't that, though, worth the price of paying if indeed Iran does not get nuclear weapons? Well, first of all, uh, it's amazing to me that we uh, included the arms embargo and the missile uh, technology question as part of this deal. Uh, the reality is, is that there's a reason why Iran wants that. It wants to be able to continue to deploy its terrorism throughout the region as it is presently doing, even in desperate economic straits. Uh, I about intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, and their ability to produce it. They've been refining their Shahab missiles, uh, among others, to be able to do that. Uh, and when they get 100 to $150 billion, yes, most of it will probably be spent in Iran. But if you just take 10% of that money uh, for their terrorism efforts, we have a real challenge in what will happen in the greater Middle East as a result of Iran having that type of money. So the question is, this does not guarantee that Iran will not achieve a nuclear weapon in the future. Uh, and I wish that when the president came out today, one of the things that he would have said that would have assuaged me a little bit uh, would have been, but under no circumstances will the United States permit Iran to achieve a nuclear weapon. Uh, he didn't say that. And the reality is, is that a decade from now, when many of the elements of uh, this program are over, uh, Iran is going to be able to move forward. It has a significant part of its infrastructure uh, in place. It can reassemble that which it has stored, and uh, off we go. And the question is, if you're going to have to face an Iran that is determined to achieve nuclear weapons, do you want to face them when they are at their weakest point, both economically and otherwise, and their defense mechanisms? Mechanisms, or do you want to face them when they are at their strongest point, when their economy has revived, when they have flush with money, when they've bought the S-300 from Russia that is a, a defense missile system that will make it more harder should they break out? Uh, these are the questions that we'll have to look at in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee.